As the House voted to oust Kevin McCarthy, former President Donald Trump returned to court in New York City for the second day of his civil fraud trial. CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa joins me now. And Bob, also some major developments with this as well, with a New York judge uh, imposing a gag order. Do we know what triggered that and also if the former president is going to abide by this? Good to be with you. Here inside the courthouse in Lower Manhattan earlier today, there was a dramatic standoff between former President Trump and Judge Arthur N. Gorin. Judge, Judge N. Gorin, who's leading the civil trial about Trump's finances and about alleged fraud committed by the Trump Organization over the years, lashed out about how Trump has handled social media. On Truth Social, Trump's social media platform earlier today, Trump issued a statement about a clerk who works for the judge, and he said that this clerk falsely is the girlfriend of Senate Major Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Democrat of New York. And because of that statement, and also a link to this, this clerk's Instagram profile, the judge was really concerned about the safety of his staff and his clerk. And he came back into the courtroom and said to Trump and his team, effectively, you now have a gag order when it comes to talking about my staff, that this is out of line, and if you violate this again, there will be serious consequences. And what might those consequences be? Well, this is a civil lawsuit trial. It's not a criminal trial. Uh, but a judge can do a lot of things to make it painful for a defendant if he in some way or she feels that the defendant is violating the sanctity of the courtroom and the sanctity of the process and the rule of law in terms of disciplinary action inside the proceeding. This is a three-month trial that's been scheduled to go on until mid-December, late December. And they could make it tough for Trump and his lawyers as they proceed. And already the judge is showcasing that he's going to be tough on Trump. I felt like it was a refrain throughout the day sitting in the courtroom, overruled, overruled. Kept hearing that from Judge Ngoran as the Trump lawyers tried to make their arguments and objections. Former President Trump has also been quite defiant since the start of this trial. Here's what he had to say today about the case and New York Attorney General Letitia James. Let's take a listen. This case should be dismissed. This is not a case. And she should probably be dismissed also because she's terrible and grossly incompetent, as I've said. So can we expect the former president to return to court again? Yes, he told reporters he is willing to come testify. His son Eric and Don Jr. are co-defendants in this case. Ivanka Trump may be called to testify. So this is a family affair potentially for the Trump family as they try to defend this business, which isn't just a family business. It's so intertwined with Trump's political persona, his political career. And that's why Trump was here in the courtroom for day two, talking to his associates today. It's evident that this is something he thinks is deeply personal. His father started the Trump Organization decades ago, Fred Trump, here in New York. And he doesn't want to have this company that his family built, that's so core to who he is, stained by a civil lawsuit from the state of New York. And so that's why he's sitting in this courthouse voluntarily, at least for the last two days. But he's also busy on the campaign trail. And there's no guarantee he's going to be here every day for what can be somewhat dry proceedings about accounting. Yeah, I was going to say, since you have been in the courtroom these last two days, what has his demeanor been like? Uh, I've seen him whisper with his lawyers. He has sometimes crossed his arms and tilted his head and shook his head when he seems frustrated with arguments being made by the state attorneys. Uh, he hasn't spoken up in the courtroom. There's, there's kind of the quiet of the courtroom itself. And then there's the ferocity outside the courtroom and Trump's comments to reporters. He takes a few steps outside the courtroom and there's a whole, almost a wing of cameras there. And he likes to speak to them during breaks. But at one point, the judge chided Trump and his lawyers for being too long on their break and said, uh, quote, I run a tight ship. And that was a message to not spend so much time in the hallways giving your comments to reporters about the judge and about his staff and about the whole enterprise. Yeah, and speaking of some of the comments the former president made, I know he did also uh, reference the fact that this is taking him off the trail. So what impact uh, could this case have on his campaign and, you know, the broader race as a whole? 
So many of his rivals right now, they tell me behind the scenes, along with their top strategists, that they want political oxygen. They can't get it. Speaker McCarthy, now former Speaker McCarthy, at least for the moment, dealing with his drama on Capitol Hill, Trump dealing with this. It's a lot for others to get attention. All right. Bob Costa reporting from us in Manhattan. Thanks so much for joining us.